Today we're going to cover wall framing on the demo house. Don't expect to learn house framing from A to Z in the next couple of minutes. We just want to give you an overview of what's a bit different with this house compared to others. We're going for LEED certification, so our wood was provided by Cot Lumber, who were able to give us a chain of custody documentation assuring us that the wood is FSC certified. That's Forest Stewardship Council, meaning it was harvested from sustainably managed forest. This is one of those green home features that has nothing to do with performance. It's just about encouraging better practice in the industry. With this house, we have a low pitched roof. We have no interior load bearing walls and we have a green roof, uh, meaning there's gonna be six inches of soil up there. All those factors make for a pretty heavy roof where it bears, which is entirely on the exterior walls. Cod also provided us with detailed framing documents and a wood order to match. Another lead point gets picked up here, the benefit being for reduced waste, since if you have the right lengths of wood on the job site, you never end up having to cut two feet off of a two by six because you, you were out of a certain length. And framing documents are just nice to work with. Since having a wall laid out for you with all the accompanying cut lists makes for a really quick framing job and it helps prevent mistakes. Since here we have a shed roof that spans almost 40 feet, the trusses were massive. They were a mix of two by sixes and two by eights, almost three feet deep. And that helped us achieve our ceiling insulation goal of R95. Our roof bears on the exterior walls only. So we have headers over all exterior doors and windows, but not every house needs that. That depends on the roof and truss design. There is a tendency to beef up walls in ways that don't really serve a purpose. That can just eat up more time and money while increasing the thermal bridging and heat loss of walls. A good example of that is when we put multiple cripples underneath window openings. You just don't need that many. Usually one or two would support the weight. So go with normal frame spacing for drywall and insulation, like your 16 or 24 inch centers. That should be more than enough. Having extra cripples up against jack posts is pretty much unnecessary. Here on the demo house, we have most of our insulation on the exterior of the sheathing. So thermal bridging issues with a little bit extra of wood here or there is not an issue as much for us. Uh, but regardless, it's just good practice. Every bit of wood you can safely replace with insulation will save you a bit of money in heating cost. And because we have most of our insulation on the exterior, we built out the window openings so that the window box extension would meet the outside insulation. It's a simple matter of nailing down strips of sheathing uh, and on the bottom piece we shinned it up slightly so after the window flashing was installed it's automatically tilted to the exterior for drainage. When it comes to framing, follow building code. It'll give you a frame suitable for your climate and any snow load that you're going to encounter. Don't necessarily go with the philosophy that stronger is better because sometimes in doing that we fortify our house well beyond reason and you end up paying for that through higher heating bills. So follow code to ensure structural integrity. After that, be sparing with any wood that you add and a bit more generous with the insulation. 